Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to prevent infinite loops with a valid terminal condition. The final topic is the dreaded infinite loop. Loops are great tools when you need your program to run a code block a certain number of times or until a condition is met, but they need a terminal condition that ends the looping. Infinite loops are likely to freeze or crash the browser and cause general program execution mayhem, with which no one wants. No one wants execution mayhem. Uh, there, are, there was an example of an infinite loop in, loop in the introduction to this section. It has no terminal condition to break out of the while loop used inside the loopy call. Do not call this function. So what it's telling you is uh, do not call my function. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> in here, the loopy while true, true always stays true. What do you need to do? You need to say, you need to set this true to be false, but that's crazy. This is without a doubt an infinite loop. Um, let's say in it, it's the programmer's job to ensure that the terminal condition, which tells the program when to break out of the loop code is eventually reached. One error is incrementing or decrementing a counter variable in the wrong direction of the terminal condition. Another one is accidentally resetting a counter or index variable within the loop code instead of incrementing or decrementing it. Um, my function over here, function contains an infinite loop because the terminal condition is, well, while i is not equal to 4. i is equal to 1, you add 2 to 1, then you get 3, then in the next iteration, i is 3. So we may add 2 to 3, we get 5, we're just going to keep running and running. So this still going is just going to keep printing to the console for the rest of time, or until the power runs out. <clears throat> um, yeah, this just describes that, an infinite loop. We'll never evaluate to fuss. I will incrementally increment by two each pass and jump right over four. So it's going to go, yeah, one, three, five. Fix the comparison operator in the term terminal condition so that the loop only runs i less than or equal to four. So we only want to run i while it's less than or equal to four. And so that means, how many times is it going to run? Well, we start at 1, and then it's going to go to 2, and then it's going to go to 3, which is less than or equal to 4, yes. And then it's going to go to 4, 4 is less than or equal to 4, yes. So it's going to print out, still going 4 times. Uh, let's see if I'm right about that. Console.log, my font, and then we put that. We want to make sure we put the parentheses in here. Interesting, it only did it twice. Less than or equal to 4. Oh, because it's incrementing up up uh, by two. So it's going to start off i is equal to one here. So we print it out once. And then i is equal to three. So we print it out the next time. And then the next time, i is equal to five, which is not less than or equal to four. So we do not do it a second time. Print it twice. And then um, because there is no implicit return, we're getting an undefined at the end. And uh, yeah, we run the test. I think that'll pass. Awesome. That's it for debugging. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, section and we'll move on to the next one, which is data structures, which is awesome. So looking forward to see you guys in the next video.